of time immediately following down in the hallway and in the blue room comes with lunch. Tomorrow, being Martin Luther King birthday, there is no Bible study. But then if you look at next week, it says 11.15, Children's Fellowship, Youth Fellowship time. It's not again next week. Just once a month, George forgot to take it off. Then there is a very important item on the second page of the Weekly Flame. For those of you who want to really concern, think you're helping us out, and if you got any 2016 pledge envelopes left, don't use them. It, it makes it difficult for the tellers because your number this year may be different from last year's number. So if you got anything left over from 2016, put them in the paper recycle box and it'll make it much easier for the tellers. At the beginning of the service, the call to worship is Psalm number 40. It is the right number, a page number, 774, but it is Psalm 40, not Psalm 41. And then there is a request, the last hymn. We are marching to Zion. We'll be singing three verses. Marching, singing, and dancing. We'll remind you at the time of it, but it's just three verses. We are marching, we are singing, and we are dancing. Any other announcements that need to be made this morning? If not, can we prepare ourselves for morning worship? Stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. Psalm number 40 on 774. Let your steadfast love preserve me. 
I waited patiently for the Lord, who inclined to me and heard my cry. The Lord opened the mouth of the desolate gate, out of the mighty God, set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Blessed are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. O Lord, my God, you have multiplied your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Your ways are true. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be numbered. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. I have not hid your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness in your salvation. O oh Lord, do not withhold your mercy from me. First hymn from the faith we sing, number 2236, Gather Us In.
May we be in an attitude of prayer. From Bethlehem to Nazareth, from Jordan to Jericho, from Bethany to Jerusalem, from then to now. To heal the sick, to mend the brokenhearted, to comfort the disturbed, to disturb the comfortable, to cleanse the temple, to liberate faith from conviction. To carry the cross, to lead the way, to shoulder the sin of the world and take it away. Today, to this place, to us. Children come forward for children's time. So when I ask you who Pastor Ida is, she's not a kind of pasta. Who's Pastor Ida? What do you remember about Pastor Ida? What do you remember about Pastor Ida? Lots of stuff. What do you remember about Pastor Ida? Did she look like me? Did she talk like me? No. Was Pastor Ida really sleepy? Low key, low energy, really frowny, didn't like children at all, couldn't stand coming to church, trying to make the donuts. What do we remember about Pastor Ida? She was cheerful. What else? She loved kisses. Some kisses. That's a good one. She was a bundle of energy. What else do we remember about her? She loved everybody who came to the church. She loved everybody who came to the church. She loved kisses. She loved kisses. Wonderful. She loved kids. And now she's in Georgia and she's recovering because she got sick in a way where it was really hard for her to still be a pastor. And she had a surgery and she had all kinds of things happen all the time. And now she's doing a wonderful job taking care of herself, which is really important, especially for pastors. In Atlanta, Georgia. So I want to have Paul say a few words about how. Pastor Ida affected his life, which is what the adults are going to be doing today, too, as we remember her and we celebrate her like we didn't really get to do because she had to leave um, after being sick pretty quickly. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about her. Um, one thing Ida was um, actually very kind. She really loved me. She was giving me so many kisses. One thing. Uh, I remember her old house. It was like, uh, 
thank you. Uh, uh, Paul was saying how Pastor Ida really helped him, and that's one thing I think she did. Is she did give beautiful kisses and gifts and hugs and loves, but she also really invested in people's lives. She really spent time with people, helping them to grow. There's some pictures of Ida on the altar, and I guess these angels are up there, Lucy was telling me, because Pastor Ida loved and collected angels. So you can see all the beautiful angels that are up there among all the pictures of Ida. And guess what, everybody? Pastor Ida's gonna get this DVD of this whole church service, and she's gonna be able to watch it, which means she's looking at you right now. I want you to turn, look at the camera right up there. And I want you to turn on your beautiful smile and say, hi, Pastor Ida! <laughs> say, we love you, Pastor Ida! <laughs> she's not, but when she plays it, she'll be watching it. She's going to watch it in Georgia. And a special message from Emmett, from her pastor, Ida. So I'm so excited to think about her and celebrate everything she did for us. And there's one other special thing we're going to do today. And it was a beautiful idea that Lucy was suggesting, which is we're going to practice the Lord's Prayer together at the end of our children's time with one another. Who has, who has our going to have pizza, too? That'll come a little later. I like pizza also. After church, yeah. After church, we'll have fellowship and we'll have pizza. So who knows the Lord's Prayer? It does not have the word pizza in it. <laughs> Raise your hand. So we're going to do it together. I'm going to say the line, and you're going to say it after me. In case you don't know, that's how we're going to learn it, in the old-fashioned way. Are you ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, what does that mean? Is he doing art in heaven? Is he painting and drawing? Such an old-fashioned thing to say, isn't it? Yeah. Who's up there, out there, in there, around there? Okay, so what do we do so far? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does that mean? There's a halo over God's name. Hallowed means special, sacred, holy, unlike any other. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Honor. As it is in heaven. Did I miss something? Give us this day. Our daily bread. And our pizza. And I'm so hungry. What does it mean to have our daily bread? Does it mean getting enough food? Yeah. It also means taking care of. Thank you. It also means taking care of everything, all of our needs. So where did where were we? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of daily. Oh, here's a good one. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Taste it. Even those cookies look really good if Mama said no cookies. Oh, God, help me not to eat the cookies, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory of ours forever and ever.
Thanks for the help from the big people out there. That was great. So let's enter a time of, of being um, slightly less excited for the children as we come to be prayerful together. Are there any joys or celebrations that you'd like to lift up? spirit of remembering Presta Ida, um, I want to rejoice in her presence and her willingness to talk about difficult things with me. Um, we're at a time when we are avoiding difficult discussions, and I think it's time that we each look very carefully at the things we hear and the things we accept as real. I would like to just I'm so glad and grateful for Pastor Ida. She just allowed us to blossom and grow and to be who we are in God, just as we are. And that is an amazing, truly amazing gift that she gave us. Other prayers and celebrations? Rejoicing. Prayer of concern. Where our two son-in-laws, uh, Michael and Adam, they both have uh, medical issues, and they're both hurting. So we need to ask God to be with them and help them through these issues that they have. Other people you'd like to lift up in prayer? like to lift up the college students. A lot of them are headed back in OER. They headed back to school today and the new semesters a lot of them start this week. So be with them. This is one of true celebration. As you have seen in this for over a year, we've had my friend Fran on this prayer chain. Uh, her lymphoma wasn't responding. She was having difficult getting that marrow transplant. And it finally, finally worked. There's still other issues, but she's on the road to recovery after nearly losing her. And I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for upholding her. And it truly, miracles happen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember, Belinda Forbes. She is a missionary that we help to support. Her work is in public health in Nicaragua. I didn't want to let this opportunity go by to say that uh, Pastor Ida helped me at a very difficult time uh, on the loss of my husband Alex. And it made a great difference, both in the grief group that she took on as a regular monthly uh, event and in a ceremony that I had at my home to honor uh, Alex. So I'm very grateful that she was a part of our community while she was. I'd like to ask prayers for my friend uh, Lorraine. Some of you know where she comes and helps at Hope's Place. Uh, she has been diagnosed once again with breast cancer and her daughter has breast cancer so they're going to be going through it together unfortunately. Um, I'd like to lift up Pastor Ida and that we continue to pray for her health and her healing. This sounds almost like a eulogy this morning. But I have this one thought. When Marcy had a, a 
exacerbation of her COPD, um, Pastor Ida got to the hospital before I did. It was so impressive, it was late at night, but she made it before I did, and i always remember that. I would like prayers. Uh, Mary Davis and I are going before a review committee on Wednesday for Hope's Place. I had submitted a grant for Hope's Place, and we're past the two phases, and this is the third and final. And Pastor Ida, um, when you get this DVD, hopefully it'll be that we received an approval for that grant. I just want to say that I was grateful for Pastor Ida when my mom was in the hospital and in rehab for so long, and she was really there for me when I needed her the most. I want to say thank you to Pastor Ida. I'm so sorry. She will not be here to see my son when he, she, he comes. I told her I had a son, and we are working on the, his patients. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Pastor Ida, for all that you've done for us. Mm -hmm. I have a prayer concern for my brother Dave. Um, he just recently had a break in a vertebrae. He has bone cancer, so um, he's at our house right now, but um, he's better. So please continue prayers for him. And um, I think of Pastor Ida as uh, a picnics that we used to have for Justin. And she would come and enjoy eating the pig's ear or something like that. I don't know. But um, she was just such a fun person to be with. And she made sure that everyone felt her love. Prayer of concern for our son's fiance, Brittany who's, they just moved to Denver, she was in a car accident, her car was totaled, she's okay, but it's all new for them, and it's, uh, she's struggling a bit. For Brittany. I just want to take, just pause for just a moment to say that after church today, the fellowship time, uh, that will be part of the fellowship hall, will be devoted to sharing around Ida, and uh, we may potentially, where's Don, take some of that for her. So if you want to share it, it's on your heart. There's a, that is the opportunity for everybody who wants to speak to speak, also to hear other people and share and talk about that. I love that you're sharing now. That's not at all to stop you from sharing now. Just to say there's more opportunity and also a smaller group if that feels more comfortable for you. But keep it coming. Okay. I just want to say, everybody's been talking about how Ida came and visited them in the hospital. When I had my surgery a year and a half ago, uh, Ida was there the first day, and I had really not woke up yet, and I said something to her. I said, I didn't know you would come. And she says, well, you were still on Walla Land. <laughs> I just want to uh, thank Pastor Ida, like we all do. She loved every single one of us in our church and all in our community. She loved everybody. And we're so thankful for you, Pastor Ida. Thank you for your beautiful spirit. We love you. Yeah, this goes along with what you said, actually. Um, Pastor Ida really uh, is a person I've met that truly exemplifies the true meaning of love. I mean, she found her calling, and uh, you can't be a very selfish person um, and be as truly loving as, as, as she is. So I just want to thank her. She came and, and helped us at our time of need, too. She uh, got rid of Cindy's pain for her with, her, with simple prayer. Any other prayers? Oh, 
Hello. I'm new to this church, and I didn't know Pastor Ida, but I would like, if I ever meet her in the future sometime, I'd like to thank her for uh, all the wonderful things and how she touched your lives. Thank you. We join our voices to say together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not.
We hear the words from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hands, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivals of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves. Because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. You stand, if you're able, for the reading of the Gospel from the book of John. The next day, he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. 
And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. And he said to brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, the word of the Lord.
me into a circle of acceptance. She prayed really hard with me for Annie. I'm very grateful for that. And she also encouraged me in my gifts as a preacher, and in her perfectly humble way, led me to be here in this position with you this morning. Kicking and screaming, I should add. <laughs> but even beyond that, which is not a small thing, she changed my relationship to Jesus. And it's a topic that's just, I can't do justice to in my little bitty bit of time here. It's a whole sermon, and I'll give it some time if you want to hear it. But I'm going to give you some really broad strokes right now. Have you ever seen the bumper sticker, Jesus, save me from your followers? <laughs> Nobody's actually seen that? Well, I would have had that on my car. Because for me, even going through a divinity school and ordination, even having my heart fixed on God, you know, the modern day Jesus just didn't do it for me. As a child, I was friends with a girl from a born again family, and I remember being saved multiple times, actually, on the face, over and over again. And I invited Jesus into my heart, and I remember asking her mother, you know, if he's so loving, why are we so afraid of him? The cultural Jesus of America seemed to me to belong to a political and social world of bigotry, unkindness, cliques, and anti-intellectualism. And that's still true. You know, I knew he was a great teacher, but I didn't count him among my personal friends. And many years changed that and things ensued. But in Ida's person, in her expression of her love for Jesus, I saw a Jesus worth a true friendship. She had a way of sharing from her connection that felt alive and real to me. And expansive. It wasn't a form of who's in and who's out. It wasn't a lesson in theology. It came from the intimacy of a lifetime. I think that faith is contagious, but it's not easily caught. Aida had a strong case of it, and she shared it freely. In fact, when I was meditating on it, it's not out of her desire to share that I caught something. In other words, it wasn't because she was trying. It was simply because she was who she was. She is who she is. And I believe strongly, more than ever before, that all we ever have to give anybody is ourselves. And the work that we have done. And the walk we have taken. And the truths that we embody. Incarnating our faith is hard work because faith is huge. And we, though it doesn't always feel that way, are very small. Ida incarnates the Jesus she knows with an eloquence of living and speaking and serving. This may well be something she can't not do. And yet it is that very gift that I am the most grateful for. I'm deeply honored to have shared some of the journey with her. And I'm deeply grateful to have seen through her eyes the kind of Jesus that I wouldn't be ashamed to hang out with. More than a Jesus who can hold our hands or hold our hearts or our lives with tenderness and compassion, this was the Jesus who works tirelessly for justice, who fights for equality, who sees unity and conquers division, a companion and a warrior, a lover and a fierce prophet. I thank God for you, Pastor Hyde, and the beautiful way that you shared the faith that sustained you. To have witnessed and benefited from her service at Hope was for me a great privilege, but it's also an ongoing story, since it's by her direction and her vision that I stand here with you as your pastor during this interim time. I feel certain that Ida's work in my life 
is not yet over. Amen. And Wayne, come on. I Get out to the electricity, you might have. Well over 90% of all the meetings that the church plays are. 
about what everybody else thinks of you and not letting really fear guide you and um, you know, a whole bunch of other things. Um, you know, she, she really did change my family's life a lot, especially with my mom. Um, you know, my mom was, um, was, you know, my mom, and then she started coming to church, and um, her and I got really close. And um, she helped my mom transform into this beautiful, beautiful woman, um, a woman whom I was able to start having a relationship with and build trust, because I myself had begun doing things not Amen. Amen. I was just back there as asking Cindy, so how long have we been coming to church? Because I still kind of feel like a newcomer here. And then I realized said it was Easter uh, 2010, and, um, you know, I, I still felt very new to the church when all of a sudden Cindy got in her accident and Ida was there and really helped Cindy ha feel no pain. She just prayed that there'd be no pain, and Cindy's pain was lessened greatly, and I thought that was a real miracle, and, um, I think, you know, in music, I hear a lot of people, oh, help me, Jesus, um, you know. Prayer is something that I think works best when you're praying for other people. But then again, I, I gotta remind you that there is a time to be selfish, and selfish has become a word that people think of badly. And I think it shows great growth that after all you've done for so many people and constantly giving that um, you had the common sense to realize it's time for you to concentrate on you. Um, I think that shows growth. And I didn't, I didn't think that, that she would be capable of that because she's so giving all the time and so full of energy. And um, you know, when I was a child and I was going to church, it felt kind of like a chore. And maybe that, that's the same way it feels for other children, but um, you know, it's, it's, she helped me see that it's not a chore, it's a, it's a gift uh, to come to church and to, to join in, in, the, in the, the good times and the bad times of all 
your church family uh, and help them where you can. And uh, I think the other thing about Ida, yeah, I'm thinking about how many weddings I've been to and we've all heard what love is. And um, I really don't think Ida ever had to read a book to know what love is. I think it's just in her nature. Um, you know, we, some of us, have to remind ourselves what love is and work at it like it's, like it's a chore. But for Ida, it's just who she is. Um, and uh, I love her in the same way for that. And I, I think that's about all I have to say for Ida, except Ida, occasionally you can pray for yourself too. <laughs> Prayer. Prayer helps and it doesn't matter. There's never enough of it. You just have to keep praying and the, the, for others and for yourself and for the world and, um, and, and hope. Amen. Most of you came because of our honor for Ida. However, today is also Human Relations Day celebrated in the Methodist Church. And so, I will begin this mission moment by reading Luke 10, verses 25 through 37, taken from the Common English Bible. A legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? He responded, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the legal expert wanted to prove that he was right. So he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He encountered thieves who stripped him naked, beat him up and left him near death. Now it just so happened that a priest was also going down the same road. When he saw the injured man, he crossed over to the other side and went on his way. Likewise, a Levite came by that spot and saw the injured man and crossed over to the other side of the road and went on his way. Now a Samaritan who was on a journey came to where the man was. But when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. The Samaritan went to him and bandaged his wounds, tending them with oil and wine. Then he placed the wounded man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took two full days' wages and gave them to the innkeeper. He said, take care of him. And when I return, I will pay you back for any additional costs. What do you think? Which one of these three was a neighbor to the man who encountered thieves? Then the legal expert said, the one who demonstrated mercy toward him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. In this parable, a priest, a Levite, and a Samaritan See a man stripped, 
beaten and left half dead on the other side. The Samaritan sees the man, dares to risk, and provides the resources needed for him to fully recover. But which road will we take? This parable calls the church to travel the dangerous road of social justice to meet the poor, the disadvantaged, and the underdeserved at the places where others have robbed them and helped them to recover from the wounds of social inequality. In his I've Been to the Mountaintop speech, the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. distinguished between the risk not taken by the priest and the Levite and the risk taken by the Samaritan. The priest and the Levite raised the question, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? The Samaritan, on the other hand, asked, if I don't stop to help this man, what will happen to him? Now these two questions are ever before the United Methodist Church. They challenge us daily, and God calls us to respond. Will those on the other side of the road know us as the church that passed by on the other side? Or will they throw us, I'm sorry, will they know us as the church that provides outreach programs and that takes risks to heal their wounds? Human Relations Day is an opportunity for United Methodists to share in seeking justice for our neighbors. On this day, congregations are given the unique opportunity to join with individuals, groups, businesses, community organizations, and residents to heal the wounds of social inequality. In your bulletin today is an envelope to give, as you are able, a special collection. This special offering supports neighborhood ministries, community advocacy, and work with at-risk youth. Human Relations Day encourages us to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to stay on the side of those others choose to forget. Thank you for your generosity. Now we have an opportunity to return to God some of those gifts that he's given us just to share, to use, when we have this morning's offering. <coughs>
Oh God, our infinite source, thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing in the world and in this church. Allow us to be in touch with your great creativity, your loving kindness, and your bounty. Allow us to feel into the prosperity of our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in all the good that we have done, in all the good we seek to do, in all the good that we will do. Amen. Would you please join me in as we go marching, singing, dancing in this hymn, when we are going to sing, we are dancing, you're going to be dancing. As George has just inspired to remind me, if Ida was here, she would ask you to dance. So now you've got to dance.